Right. Well, hello and welcome. Um, first of all, I'm going to uh, run through a couple of the things that, um, if you like, make our course particularly um, well uh, interesting. Um, uh, firstly, I should probably say that illustration at AUB is a uh, we're quite a diverse um, course, so that we're looking for lots of students who have a range of different skills. Um, illustration currently is um, a growing um, uh, field and it certainly in the last few um, say years, decades, uh, illustration has started to move into areas that traditionally might have been um, the, the specialisms of areas like graphic design, animation, um, so you find illustrators who are doing a range of different things and some of the students that um, student works that I'm going to show you um, will uh, give you an idea of that. Um, first of all, um, I'm going to run through a few hang on, um, of the students uh, student works over the last few years. So um, we've got Alia here who um, like a lot of illustrators works in uh, fairly traditional media um, at first, but her interest particularly is in, in children's book illustration. Um, and she spends uh, quite a lot of time working um, drawings uh, through sketchbooks, but then working them up into digital um, processes so that she can then use those to um, produce uh, fully kind of um, uh, complete books. Um, let me give you a, a another example of students working across different uh, media. So this is um, Ellie Hall. She graduated, graduated two years ago. And uh, one of the areas that um, illustration is uh, traditionally connected to is, is editorial, which is the production of images that sit alongside news content, um, that go into publications, and news publications, magazine publications, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of, although this isn't moving at the minute, a lot of the work um, that our illustrators are doing um, works both as static pieces and also as uh, animated uh, pieces. It's not quite the same as animation as a degree because animators tend to work as in teams, but these pieces are designed to work on social media feeds or in uh, online content uh, for newspapers. And these pieces actually move, so you have faces kind of swapping through um, and that kind of thing. Um, we do have quite uh, a strong, so there's a, a lot of students who are working traditionally, um, and often they will use crossover between traditional and digital, whether that's um, putting images in digital format and then creating color layers in order to print them through screen printing as, as kind of traditional print processes, whether it's through uh, traditional drawing techniques, which may then for some be taken into uh, digital formats, or whether it's working directly into the digital, either working through Wacom tablets or Cintiq, which are two different kinds of drawing process, um, or working directly into programs like Illustrator uh, and Photoshop. Um, and this range of different practices takes students into a whole load of uh, areas that illustration is now um, becoming uh, fairly uh, known for. So for example, Sergey here is producing work in 3D. So we have a number of students who work within 3D modeling pro programs um, to produce, produce work, which is um, uh, for things like concept art for games uh, or working on um, animated uh, content for, uh, we've had a couple of students, in fact, I'll show you one in a minute, um, who are producing things for um, what, uh, large um, award in Berlin called Pictoplasma. And some of that is, is 3D content, uh, some of it's 2D content, um, and I'll show you again a little later. Um, so we have a range of different, students working in a range of different areas, and illustration does uh, still hold on to its, um, its roots in children's book illustration, editorial illustration, illustration that connects to the sciences, so natural history illustration, um, comic book, independent zines, that sort of thing, um, uh, working in... Um, uh, working as, as uh, illustration for literature. There's a whole load of different uh, areas that historically illustration has been connected to. And some of these areas um, are also kind of changing. So we have 
in some cases where there are companies who are producing children's books that have um, augmented reality content. So we're also looking at the fringes of, of what's going on within um, these areas so that we can see what's going on in industry, what's going on professionally, and we can help students to kind of build their work towards that. Um, fashion illustration, we have students working in that. Um, and students also working, so this is Hannah Mitchell who is producing um, works which are hand cut, um, hand drawn uh, initially, or so drawn out, hand cut and put together into um, uh, publications that are more like one-off publications. So we also have students who are working what we call authorially or working within craft techniques, um, which if you like make um, objects into um, uh, kind of um, desirable things. So they're producing things which are perhaps one-offs, not just multiples. Um, again, students who are working with um, not only um, uh, image-based stuff, but also exploring different ways of bringing typography in there. So this is a piece by Joe McIntosh. Um, and again, students who are working in more traditional processes, hand-drawn processes. Um, it's produced by Liam Ward. Some of the some of the works will um, also end up in in quite sort of um, strange, if you like, uh, outcomes. So Liam's work ended up on ceramics. Um, he was producing uh, images which reflected his his background from he came from Sheffield. So he was sort of drawing stuff from his past um, and exploring ways of um, turning that into contemporary sort of uh, images for ceramic objects. Um, and we have a number of students, well, we have quite, quite a sizable number of students who, who are international. Um, what's great about students uh, that we have on the course, international students, is that well, there's a lot of sharing of um, cultural iconography, uh, approaches, different attitudes to illustration. So students um, at AUB are not only getting some sense or some experience of how different um, ways of working uh, can be used to produce work, um, but there's this sense that people are sharing a lot more of kind of the different different kind of cultures of illustration. This is also a, um, a video uh, of a piece by um, India. And this is a good example of someone who's using, oh, this is a video piece. It's a good example of somebody who's using uh, a digital technology initially. So producing stuff in, in Illustrator um, and then taking that into screen printing. So this is a one-off book which has been created in, in a digital piece of software and then taken through into um, a different a traditional process in order to produce um, sort of a, a unique object. So these are a few of the contexts that, that illustrators are currently working in. So publishing covers, graphic novels, ebooks, that kind of thing. Textile design and interior design, mostly it's a surface pattern. Um, so those students who are working in illustration who are interested in surface pattern design are generally working on the print side rather than uh, what a traditional textiles course would do, which is working in um, processes such as knit, stitch, those kinds of things. Packaging and product, editorial, as I mentioned before, moving image and advertising, so looking at ways of bringing animated content into, into advertising or into editorial. Authorial illustration, that's basically um, individuals working on self-expressive work, so it could be through independent uh, magazines or, or zines, it could be um, much more sort of artistically led. Um, children's picture books and toys and character design. So we have a number of students who are also interested in taking their designs and putting them into three-dimensional um, forms. The course itself is three years long. Um, we go level four, five and six. These are connected really to the UK, um, what we call the um, higher education standards. Um, and so level four, five, and six are really year one, year two, and year three. Um, the course is quite large. There's approximately 240 students, um, and it is full-time with course studio days, tutorial sessions, critiques, um, and um, a variety of different workshops and events that go on around those. It's, um, it's unitary, which means that rather than students necessarily picking a whole load of different um, uh, modules in which they kind of piece together a course, the structure of, of the course is set around a series of briefs that run, uh, connect from one to the next, so that there's a sense of a journey that the students are taking across the entire course. Uh, the end of each unit involves an assessment process, and those change depending on the kind of unit that's being run. So some of those assessments are done 
as group assessments or group uh, presentations. Some are done um, by submission, um, some of them are essay based. And with each assessment, there's a range of verbal and written feedback that comes with it. So you'll get a, a written document that tells you exactly how you um, dealt with each of the, the outcomes or the learning outcomes that are expected for the, for the unit, but also some sense of how you can move those forward in the future. You'll also have opportunities to discuss uh, assessment feedback um, to get a sense of perhaps things you could do better, things that perhaps you need to think about in the, in the following assessments. Most of level four, which is the first year, is about um, experimentation. It, it deals with questions such as what is illustration and what can illustration be? Um, these are a few students from last year's level four, um, and these two students uh, were exploring, looking at different ways of dealing with drawing. So not just drawing as um, a, a kind of pencil on paper or pen on paper, but starting to think about collage work, starting to think about uh, negative positive space, starting to cut up images. Um, and these were also based, started to be, become based around a theme. So the piece on the left, the Mega Kebab Pizza, was a piece that was that the student um, went out looking at various different fast food outlets and starting to put together a shrine to fast food. So this is, um, this is something which uh, um, also helps to guide some of these experimental approaches, is the sense of beginning to bring, bring themes in. Um, perhaps on the left you'll notice uh, an image which is quite, um, it's very illustrative in the sense that you can see um, how um, the student is definitely dealing with, with issues that are related to illustration and practices which we tend to kind of connect to illustration. On your right this is another piece that that student was working on and they started to explore here other ways of thinking about illustration. So here they were exploring photographic techniques, bringing photographs in, um, adding in bits to the photographic work so that you get the sense of um, uh, a strange land, a kind of uh, an abstract landscape. So it's not all about knowing how to produce things through drawing processes. Some of it is about thinking about different processes that you can bring in to the, um, to the work. Uh, we do um, encourage students to keep sketchbooks um, or at least keep a visual journey of how they make work. So to a large extent, a lot of the work that's being produced here is um, very much uh, about the visual. It's not necessarily about producing a lot of writing, justifying what you do. Um, it's very much about producing visual work. Level five. Am I going too fast? Just yeah. as a matter now, okay. So um, for the second year, uh, there's a large focus on um, audience context, starting to think about how your work fits into the broader fields um, of illustration, how it connects to those areas that um, you may be working in uh, come the end of the course. So you're starting to think about what kind of work I make, what kinds of audiences do I want my work to appeal to, uh, and how do I want that work um, to, or how can I begin to think about the sp specialising in terms of the work that I produce. Um, Illustration's long-standing relationship with text and narrative, um, coming from uh, both you know book and children's book illustration, is deeply ingrained in in uh, part of the second year system. But these aren't necessarily about uh, responding to novels or responding to uh, creating children's books. They're also about responding to text more broadly. So it could be that the texts come from all sorts of different places. Um, moving image is an increasingly large part of what illustrators have to do. So for many contemporary illustrators, it's not just about producing a series of static images, but also having a basic understanding of how these images might be animated or how you might be able to produce things within uh, different technological formats. So the last part of uh, Level 5 is very much exploring the boundaries of contemporary illustration, what goes on, what new technologies are bringing to the discipline. We have a number of students uh, uh, throughout the, the uh, second year and the third year. We start encouraging uh, students to think very much about applying for prizes, competitions, external recognition. Because even if you're not winning um, awards, even if you're getting highly commended, um, you are still being seen by a panel of peers, a panel of judges who, who are experienced professionals in that field. They're getting to see your work 
and in some cases, um, uh, in a couple of cases that we've had with students, they're also then later on starting to look at look back at you. They remember who you are, and they start to pick up um, things that you've done. This is a, um, an example of one of our students who's uh, put work together for the Portfolio Society. Um, this is a piece for the book Warhorse. So part of that first um, project is looking at things like how, how you can work in relation to texts, um, but also starting to apply for um, a whole load of prizes and awards such as the Macmillan uh, Children's Book Prize, the Folio Society Prize, those kinds of things. Um, like I say, there's also animation. <clears throat> this, when it moves around, um, has uh, is a series of uh, experimental animations that start to look at how you might take um, uh, character design or character ideas into animated processes. Um, the next one is also uh, a video piece. This is Vari. Um, she created um, a series of works um, using our um, Museum of Design in Plastic. She took outdated technology, um, audio technology, and remade these um, as a series of uh, different three-dimensional objects, and then animated them uh, along with a soundtrack. Alongside the, um, the main <clears throat> um, studio work, we also get in a series of visiting lecturers. Uh, we get visiting uh, external contributors <clears throat> who come in um, and run workshops uh, on specialist skills. So we have um, uh, externals who come in and run workshops on creating zines. Um, we have this one is uh, the um, Paper Cinema Company who came in and did a workshop on animating um, uh, simple animations using um, cut um, and collaged uh, pieces of, of material. Um, and these are the kinds of workshops that we like to get students to see how professionals work, how the kinds of fields that they may be working in, the kinds of processes they may need to think about. The final year, level six, is all about resolution. It's all about bringing um, your portfolio together for um, uh, employment um, or thinking about whether you're going to take things on to further, uh, further um, study so, for example, going on to do an MA. It's very much self-directed. You write the briefs um, and you solve the problems that you set for yourself. Um, alongside this, there's a strong emphasis on professional practice and developing a portfolio, particularly at the moment, an online portfolio and an online presence um, that will allow you to take your work to um, agents, to commissioning editors, um, and show that work um, in a format that's increasingly um, now being asked, you know, asked to be seen. Um, so that portfolio development and the online presence is all part of our professional practice uh, module, which is all geared around um, understanding uh, how to manage money, how to produce business plans, how to think about your future. Um, these are some of the level six uh, projects. This is. Um, a student who's working uh, with hand-drawn uh, processes um, and this student was working or was looking at um, uh, going out studying uh, parents whose whose um, uh, sons and daughters were at university um, during a particular period uh, of um, say when student fees came in and they were interviewing parents um, about uh, children's futures and in this they were starting to put together a series of portraits that were based around this theme so they were looking at how these themes uh, these social and political themes might be might be dealt with within illustration other illustrators are working very hard on producing work which um, is all about bringing together a whole um, uh, range of skills that they've developed over the last three years in order to produce uh, finished complete um, and uh, very well um, presented uh, final pieces. This student uh, was taking everything that she knew about uh, perspective, everything she knew about um, narrative, and bringing it together into one uh, children's book based around urban foxes. Some of them, uh, some of the works are deliberately, um, uh, say, challenging or deliberately. Um, uh, ugly because one of the things that, or weird, 
uh, one of the things that we encourage our students to think about is when they're going out into the field, into the into the, the world of work, how they get recognised. I mean, illustration is currently a very popular area. There's a lot of material out there. So how do you make work that becomes that allows you to become very visible in that kind of environment where there's lots and lots of imagery being made? Um, besides the actual the studios that students work in, we share a range of resources. Um, we have resources which we call central resources, which um, we uh, share across uh, other courses such as fine art, graphic design, uh, visual communication. Um, so the print room is uh, one of the central resources. We've got a very large print facility um, and a book bindery. Um, and those are resources that students are timetabled into, but also have free access to on certain days where they can go in and produce their own work. Uh, we have a, an award-winning drawing studio. Um, it's actually appeared, I think, in, in one of the British newspapers this well, yesterday. Um, it's designed by uh, a group of architects who were very well known in the 1970s and 80s um, for making very, very odd um, and supposedly unbuildable structures. We have got one of the first um, UK buildings uh, produced by this, this um, group. Um, and it's designed especially for drawing. It's the whole uh, of the interior. It's designed to capture and hold light, um, and it's something that we're all uh, very proud of. Um, we also have the library, uh, which is an art and design specialist library. It contains um, content that's very much about art, design, media, and performance. Um, and so the content in there is highly relevant to the students' studies. Um, and we also have a range of location activities where we take students out of the studio, and take them to visit um, either uh, sites of uh, cultural interest um, or we take them on drawing activities, that kind of thing. So this is the drawing studio. As you can see in there, there's, the whole place is um, uh, designed especially to show, uh, to, to, to channel light um, around uh, the space. It is bright blue. Um, we like that. Uh, this is the print room. Uh, in fact, this is the old print room. Uh, the new print room is bigger and it's um, brighter um, and it's uh, much more, there's much more going on in it. Um, alongside the print facilities, we also invite um, industry professionals uh, to talk to students about how to pitch work or how to uh, present work for a, um, either for employment or for awards. So this this is actually um, a, uh, a talk uh, pitching session where we had individuals from a range of different uh, commercial art uh, organisations. Recently, we've had um, a group called DNAD in to do what we call a brief in. Uh, DNAD run um, the, I think internationally, is one of the biggest awards. In DNAD stands for Design and Art Direction. Um, they won one of the biggest uh, international awards. Um, around that subject so we have uh, they come in and talk to the students very much about how to how to pitch for live briefs how to um, how to uh, address for live briefs um, how to present work um, to uh, professionals um, and we also have a series of lectures um, that run on Fridays these Friday lecture series is all about um, bringing professionals in people who already have experience uh, usually a long time experience of working within the industry and they come in and talk to us uh, talk to our students about uh, their specific areas of interest so it could be um, on the one hand Johnny Hanna who does a lot of work uh, within um, uh, advertising but also picture book creating um, or, or Jack Bruffman and Peter Morey who do live scribing so these sessions are very much designed to kind of fit uh, across a whole range of different types of practices Recently, we had uh, Christy Minchin, and who does three-dimensional work, um, and makes um, uses illustration to produce children's playgrounds. Trips and adventures. We do uh, a fair amount of um, uh, location-based um, uh, stuff. Um, either that's looking at archives or going into museums and galleries to study um, different kinds of um, uh, uh, artifacts. Um, or it could be um, taking you off on drawing exercises, which may involve um, going out to uh, specific sites, um, working last, the last one we did was with a storyteller, 
so having storytellers working with you um, and you have to respond to those um, <clears throat> and I think we're getting on now to a couple of our alumni so Tom Hovey um, who's particularly well known in the UK in terms of illustration because the Great British Bake Off is a huge um, television um, series uh, that's been running for a number of years um, in the UK. Tom Hovey is the illustrator for the cakes when they come up, the ideas for the cakes, he does all the illustrations for it. So his work is seen by millions um, uh, every time they run a series. Natasha Durley, she won the AOI uh, award. The Association of Illustrators is a, a large nationally recognised organisation that um, uh, produce uh, or that, that look after illustrators that run um, uh, kind of promotional aspects uh, and look after the legal um, and copyright side of, of, um, of illustrators practice. Uh, Natasha um, not only won the uh, AOI prize, more, more recently she's, she's known for um, producing a range of producing the prints for a range of genderless clothes um, at John Lewis. Uh, George Tonks, he's now in the third year um, but last year he won Pictoplasma's Secret Sidekick. Pictoplasma is a big uh, character design um, uh, competition in Berlin. Uh, and this year he came in as a second year student on the degree and won this Secret Sidekick award. Uh, Dennis Gunzav, I mentioned DNAD before. Um, but Dennis Gunzav uh, won a pencil. She was last, last year, she won a pencil for her work. Uh, and with the DNAD prize, it's very much about responding to live briefs. So her work was uh, based around, um, it was called Stone Guests, and it was uh, created for uh, an organisation called Indigo Hotels. Um, and they run a whole chain, whole range of different hotels internationally. So these were designs for um, their Italian hotels. Um, we also have uh, a lot of students who are kind of interested in, in um, book, de book design, that kind of thing. So there are a number of uh, different awards. This is the V&A Illustrations Awards. Uh, and this is Faye Troot, who won a student runner-up in 2018. Uh, this is Beth Lord, whose Macmillan Children Book um, Award came highly commended in uh, the 2018 um, uh, awards. And like I said before, sometimes it is simply being able to be seen, be recognised, um, that is really important for students, especially as they're, you know, you're, you're competing against people who are actually working in, uh, in graduate, you're competing about a very large number of people and some of them are postgraduate students as well. Uh, Creative Conscience Awards are very much about um, work which deals with um, social issues or work that has shows a kind of consciousness um, so Megan Tan had got highly highly commended in creative conscience awards uh, last year uh, for a story she wrote about a boy um, who is who kind of gets to know a whale but the boy never it's never explained in the story but the boy only has uh, one leg uh, he has an artificial limb and this is never mentioned it's just sort of taken as part of the story so a lot of what what it's about is about not necessarily it's about um in a way normalizing uh, disability um it's nice that is a well-known um website for illustrators and if you are interested in illustration it's worth having a look at this um, particular we uh, website it also deals with animation graphic design um but they have um if you like they're a style blog um, a very well-known style blog for these areas. Every year they run a, a chosen graduates um, uh, section. Uh, this year one of our graduates, Daniel Spencer, was chosen uh, as kind of the top 10 graduates to watch um, in the UK. And Yeni Siren Kyla, uh, she again the Creative Conscience Awards, yeah, Yeni was doing, uh, was completing her master's qualification at this point and she uh, picked up silver at the Creative Conscience Award for a book which is about um, how to raise a feminist daughter. Um, we also have illustrators like Emily, Emily Hughes who are doing particularly well within children's book in industry. So uh, this is one particular, particularly interesting book because Emily wrote this when she was in her final year of university. Um, so in a, this was part of a graduate work 
Um, and when she had finished, it was taken up by um, a well-known children's book publisher called Flying Eye Books. <coughs> um, and again, these are some sketches um, of her work. <coughs> um, Marina Munn, um, we have a number of students now who, who have done, um, or students and uh, staff, who have uh, produced work for um, Google. Marina Munn produced this Google Doodle for uh, St George's Day in 2017. Um, and we have other staff who are now, uh, other ex-students who are also coming back in, uh, having um, been very successful outside, who are coming back in to advise uh, current students about um, uh, where to take work, what the industry is like. So Debbie Powell is in this year as a, um, a visiting tutor to look at um, individual student works and to talk about her experiences of working in the industry. So what are we looking for? Uh, for all students, we're looking for enthusiasm. It's particularly interest, uh, useful uh, if you are working within illustration. Um, it's uh, quite a tough area to work in and you're working to quite tight deadlines. Um, and you need to be someone who is able to keep working, to be able to make work without um, without too much thinking about it, be able to kind of produce quite quickly, work to short deadlines. Uh, we do need good drawing skills. Even if you're working digitally, a lot of the work will initially start off in uh, drawing-based practices, whether that's working directly into the digital or working uh, in more traditional ways. We also want students who are intellectually curious because we're interested in students who are, in, who are testing the boundaries of what illustration can be. As it's rapidly changing, we want students who want to see or want to explore what the edges of that, what the discipline are. So your portfolios should include a range of different kinds of work. They should include finished work, but most importantly, they need to include developmental work. We want to know how you develop your ideas. We want to see how you take an idea from uh, the initial stages all the way through to completion. So it must show how you've uh, tested ideas, how you've tried out different things, how some of those may or may not have worked, um, and how you've taken that into a final piece. Um, when it comes to the interview, if you are interviewed, you, we will ask you about your work, of course, exhibitions you've visited, so anything that you've seen, books you've read, films you've seen, and anything really that relates to a kind of broader cultural interest. So anything that you um, are particularly interested in, in it could be art, design, performance, uh, music, media, anything like that. So we just want a sense of you as a person, as well as you as an individual um, artist. And that's it from me. So, uh, the unitary system, how does it influence students' freedom? Well, it shouldn't in influence it, it shouldn't uh, restrict it at all, because the projects are extremely broad. Um, so students get an opportunity within each project to take that project in their own direction. We are asking, we are giving students an outline of, um, in the same way as a professional brief might be given, an outline of things that, that um, we'd like you to examine or cover, and then we're asking you to take your own approach to it. So you can be as broad as you like. You can take these ideas um, in a whole load of different uh, ways. In a way, the unitary structure is really a way to help build um, a student journey. So it's, it's about helping you to explore those parts, those skills, those techniques and those attitudes that all illustrators need in their contemporary work or in their professional work. So in, in some ways, this is about preparing or offering you different challenges and seeing different ways in which you meet those challenges. The briefs are very, very broad. 